Mr. O'Toole, you still support the idea of a, a royal commission on um, the pandemic, as you had suggested when you were running for leadership? I had said we should have a very short examination to get the lessons correct from the first wave. Um, a commission of inquiry of some sort is important, but not something that drags on for four years because then we don't learn the lessons. This government didn't announce a lessons learned process from the first wave until I asked Minister Haidu about it on a phone call. They announced it the next day. This is a government making up their response to the second wave on the fly. Thank you. In Dr. Tam's report today, uh, the annual report for public health, she mentioned meatpacking plants as a high risk area for COVID transmission. So what sort of changes have been made federally in terms of protecting some of these workplaces uh, in, in food packing and like tight quarters? Um, we know that uh, meat processing and, and food processing could be um, a working environment that necessitates, you know, a lot of people uh, working close by. So this is why we are assisting financially with $77.5 million, our food processors, so they can have more resources to put uh, divisions between uh, the workers, to add, it, to add some uh, sanitary stations, for example. So this is definitely something that we recognize and we know that the employers are um, are doing their best to protect their workers and protect our food supply chain. Dr. Tam mentioned social cohesion, right? Everyone working together on a common cause to, to fight the pandemic. Do you feel that that's still happening here in Ottawa? There's been so much back and forth between the opposition and the government, whether things are a confidence vote, not a confidence vote. Has this house lost the social cohesion that the doctor's looking for in Canadian society? I would say that Canadians uh, do recognize the importance of, of getting together. Uh, people working in the food industry uh, feel that they are essential workers, and I think Canadians realized uh, that the food workers are essential workers, and we should not take them for granted. Given the uh, report today from Statistics Canada on visible minorities being more affected by COVID, do you think there are more like, there is a need for more programs to protect those who live in those like neighborhoods where like I'm sorry I did not hear very well the, the beginning of your question. Yeah, there was a report today this morning with, from St Statistics Canada showing that there are like people of, of visible like people who are described as visible minorities were affected more severely by COVID-19. Do you think there is a need the government has to put more programs to help those who are in the lower class? To maybe like uh, you know like to be able to uh, to, uh, to to manage the the pandemic uh, the, the way a pandemic is affecting them in a, in a better way. I think we we did so we put uh, different measures to support uh, minorities or most vulnerable people, uh, more support to seniors to people living with an handicap. Uh, we announced um, some special measures to support the the black community and entrepreneurship women entrepreneurs as well uh, so there are, we, we do recognize the challenges and uh, we have put in place a lot of other measures that support the most vulnerable in general through the CERB uh, the Canadian emergency response benefit for example so uh, we are trying we are really doing our best to to support the most vulnerable what has taken until almost November for this data to come out why wasn't this data available earlier on in the pandemic to identify some of these hot spots and problem areas and issues that people of socioeconomic uh, lower income brackets were having uh, in terms of the pandemic? We did support uh, in different ways uh, through uh, the, 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 the last six months. I'm thinking about the return, uh, the extra return on GST, for example. It came early in the process, uh, an additional amount on the um, child benefit as well came early in the process so we are really doing our best and I can tell you that uh, us within the government and, and our officials are working days and nights right the data that breaks down racial gender socioeconomic that sort of stuff I mean this were this is information that a lot of epidemiologists wish Canadians and Canadian uh, researchers and scientists had more access to earlier on in this pandemic. That there might have been more actions that could have been taken specifically to target areas that were becoming hotspots. So was that a failure of the government not to have that type of data available? It's a, learning, it's a
it's a learning process. I think we've done as good as we could in, in such you know, an historic pandemic. Thank you. Can you comment today on Dr. Tam put out her annual report saying that you know there needs to be a lot more work in uh, stamping out the inequalities that exist in Canada and that's part of the issue with health outcomes. One of the big factors in COVID-19, that sort of thing. So do you see that happening right now in the government's policies? Unfortunately, I have to read the report. I have not I have not read it in depth, so I, I would prefer to read it before commenting. Can I just ask you if you have concerns about long-term care facilities oh. in the second wave? Because obviously 80% of Canada's COVID deaths have come in long-term care facilities. Uh, I asked Dr. Tam if you know there have been enough changes made to avoid what happened in, in the spring. What yes. do you think is going on? Uh, absolutely. I, I, we should all be concerned. That is a very vulnerable population. When we look at the statistics, we see that it has occurred in a lot of long-term care homes as, as well as a lot of seniors. And so those things are, are that we should be doing, taking extra precautions to protect our seniors. Yeah. Thank you.